Well, for more on the story, we can talk to Andrew Salman. He's an editor at the Asia Times. He joins us from Seoul. Andrew, thanks for being with us. Uh, current President Moon Jae-in had previously pledged not to pardon former officials convicted of corruption. Was this move expected? What do we think changed his mind? Um, I can't say that, but uh, this move was, was very much expected. Uh, we've seen this happen before to disgraced ex-presidents who were sentenced to life in jail, even to death sentences. Uh, th these sentences were changed and pardons were issued. So there are definitely presidents for this. This was predicted. Um, and of course, the timing is critical. Moon leaves office next May. Um, we have a presidential election in March. So. This timing, the, the, the traditional New Year's pardon, um, is late in the day for Park, who spent a long time behind bars, but yeah, was uh, not unexpected. All right, well, what kind of a reactions have we been seeing so far to the pardon announcement there in South Korea? Okay, well, I mean, the, the how can I put it? The um, conventional reaction is that this is Moon granting himself some insurance, so that when he leaves office next year, perhaps the right wing, uh, he's a left wing president, of course, the right wing will be less vindictive uh, towards him uh, when he's lost the, uh, the aegis of the presidency. But there's another rather curious political dynamic, which is this, um, and that's personality politics. Um, Park uh, was essentially uh, put into put out of office, put into jail uh, due to a very, very powerful prosecutor general um, who now, in this rather bizarre political changeover, is heading the right wing party. I is the, the candidate for the right wing party in the upcoming presidential election. So this means that the right wing park, uh, due to this issue of personality politics, her re-entry to the political arena during this campaign may actually benefit the left-wing governing party rather than the right-wing opposition. Ah, interesting political move there. Well, you you alluded to this earlier, but uh, with uh, Moon Jae-in facing the possibility of no longer being president, looking ahead to uh, to his own future, it's, it seems that uh, convicting former presidents is a bit of a, a common theme among South Korean politics there, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's not just former presidents. It's also the some of the biggest tycoons in the country, the heads of corporations, including Samsung, uh, Hynix, SK, that some of the biggest names in corporate South Korea uh, have all had sentences or suspended sentences which have been overturned. And of course, there's two interpretations of this. Is this a very vindictive judicial and political culture, or is it a very democratic political and judicial culture? Questions hang over this. And adding a further issue, of course, is the fact that pardons are very commonly issued before these sentences are served. So uh, it's a complex situation. All right. Well, I will be keeping a close eye on that as uh, the months progress with that upcoming election. It's Andrew Salmon from the Asia Times. Thanks so much for being with us. And finally,